Good morning, dear friends in Christ, on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost, August 9th. And this morning we turn our attention to Paul's letter in Romans in chapter 10. Now, you may be familiar with the saying, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. The saying is actually a misquote from St. Francis of Assisi, who simply wanted Christians to practice what they preach. But so often this saying is interpreted to mean that the gospel can be proclaimed through our actions or our works. But Paul takes issue with this. He says that faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. The gospel, according to Paul, must be proclaimed aloud with words. And that word must be the word of Christ. The word of God alone creates and sustains faith in the hearts of all mankind. And so that's the focus of our worship this morning. Uh, dear friends, if you would like to follow along with our service, you can do so by grabbing your hymnal, uh, turning to page 260 for the service of prayer and preaching. And let us begin. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is true. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy will you draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. Our Old Testament reading for the tenth Sunday after Pentecost is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you? When I laid the foundation of the earth, tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began, and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth, and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal. And its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare, if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle for this morning is from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law. 
that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Dear friends, I invite you to confess with me our Christian faith, starting with the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And we confess together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again this morning, we turn our attention to St. Paul. And Paul begins this section of our text first by dispelling the idea that righteousness is accomplished through the law. Though the law promises that anyone who can keep the law will live by it. Paul already established earlier in chapter 3 of, of Romans that it is impossible. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The law cannot save us. Even though it has this promise attached to it. It is unattainable for sinful mankind. And sinful mankind continues to wrestle with the righteousness based on faith. Often we think we must search for righteousness through our own efforts. Looking high and low, saying to ourselves, who will ascend into heaven to find it or descend into the abyss? To paraphrase Paul, that type of thinking leads us to look for Christ in places he never said he would be found. To bring Christ down or to bring Christ up from the dead. Rather, the righteousness of faith says to us, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. And this promise is for everyone. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So the word of God is what saves us. More specifically, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of God creates faith in our hearts. And it leads our lips to confess Jesus as Yahweh or God. And this is what leads us to the second part of our text. There is a quote that has been floating around for many years, falsely attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, who says, Preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Well, he never actually said this. But I bring that quote to your attention because it has somewhat become a creed among many American churches. And while its intent is to encourage people to live out their faith, it makes a critical mistake of redefining what the word preach means. And it unintentionally turns the gospel into a statement about you and your works, which by its very definition is not the gospel. Instead, I think we should hear what Paul has to say on the matter. He says, How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. I think Paul has soundly defeated this poor misquote of St. Francis. Those who cling to the idea that preaching the gospel through our actions are often the same ones who think that we can live through the righteousness of the law. But as Paul clearly stated, we cannot. We are not able to come to Christ on our own. Paul says, how can someone call on Jesus if they don't know he existed, ever believing in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can you hear about him 
unless someone tells you about him. It's for that reason God sent the prophets in the Old Testament. It's why he established the church in the New Testament. Their purpose was to preach, to proclaim God's word. That word preaching can only be understood one way. It is the public proclamation or announcement of the word. Its very definition rules out being able to preach by your actions or example or good works. They may emphasize or support your preaching, but they in themselves are not the clear proclamation of God's word. To preach the word of God means to speak it, to confess with our mouths what is in our hearts. Just like Paul says, the word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith that we proclaim. But what is that word of faith? What is the word that we proclaim? It isn't simply words of encouragement or a set of instructions on how to be better stewards or how to live your best life now. It's not some motivational speech to get you pumped up for the rest of your week. The word that we preach and confess is nothing less than the good news of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, this has become a major failing in many of our churches in the world, especially those churches who have reduced the gospel into statements about social justice issues or political statements or these ten Christian principles to greater wealth. I wish I was making this up, but it is the truth. There are churches who never or maybe only occasionally preach about Christ. It's not very appealing to people to be reminded that they are sinners in need of a Savior. People don't like that. We could very easily fill our church if our preaching was nothing more than positive messages about being nice to one another or about how we can improve our lives through these five simple steps. That is not the kind of preaching Paul is talking about. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. The content of all preaching must be the word of God. It must be the gospel. As St. Paul himself says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If you find yourself in a church that does not preach about Christ's death on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, then you need to run from that place as fast as you can and find a church that will boldly confess Christ. Paul is very clear that faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. And it is faith that leads us to confess Christ as God and to believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. It is through faith in Jesus Christ that we are saved. If the church does not confess Christ, how will those who have never heard the gospel receive the gift of faith and be saved? It is for this reason that every Sunday I proclaim the same gospel, the promise of the forgiveness of sins through the death of Christ, and the promise of eternal life through his resurrection. Once again, if we look closely at the words of St. Paul, he says, faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. He did not say faith came from hearing, meaning we heard the word once and that was enough to grant us faith, even though God's word certainly has that power. Paul says faith comes from hearing. It is a continual action. Every time we hear the word of God, we receive a portion of faith. Every time we hear the gospel, our faith is strengthened and renewed. As sinners, we need this constant reminder, lest we forget Christ's love and mercy on the cross. It is the very word of God that transforms us from unbelievers into believers and grants us salvation through the promises of Christ. God has shared this promise with all people. For there is no distinction, he says, between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, 
bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Christ's death on the cross was not for a select few, it was for all sinners. Christ accomplished what we could not. He fulfilled the law perfectly on our behalf, giving us this gift of righteousness. Before God, we stand blameless and holy on account of Jesus Christ. The gospel declares that we have been forgiven through the redeeming death of Christ on the cross. Receive this gospel promise with joy, which creates faith in your hearts. Faith that allows us to believe and be justified. Faith that opens our lips to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and be saved. I pray that now you understand the purpose and content of Christian preaching. Though you hear it every Sunday, never take it for granted. Let us never grow tired of hearing God's word or exchange the freedom in the gospel for the oppression of the law. May we faithfully receive the gospel of Jesus Christ every opportunity as it is presented with thanksgiving. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing through the word of Christ. May the word of God enter your ears. Dwell in your hearts, creating faith that moves your lips to confess Christ to the world. Pray for the church that it may continue its mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and pray for all to hear and to believe the promises of Jesus Christ who died and rose for all people. As the words of the famous hymn, Thy Strong Word, declare in verse 5, Give us lips to sing thy glory, tongues thy mercy to proclaim, throats that shout the hope that fills us, mouths to speak thy holy name. Alleluia, alleluia. May the light which thou dost send fill our songs with alleluias, alleluias, without end. My dear friends, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And dear friends, once again, if you would like to submit your offering to the church, you can do so by either mailing your offering to P.O. Box 35, uh, Eagle Bend, Minnesota, for Emmanuel Lutheran Church, or mail it to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church, P.O. Box 425, Clarissa, Minnesota, or go online to eaglevalleylcms.org, click on our donate page, and you can click on either church and set up a one-time gift or a recurring gift. It's totally up to you. And we pray that God would continue to bless you with everything that you need for this daily life. Dear friends, let us go to God in prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and a pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the holy Christian church, here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our brothers and sisters in the care centers, or those who are at high risk, who are unable to worship with us due to COVID-19, for an end to this current pandemic, for peace among all peoples, for our communities to be united by the peace of Christ, and for all who have undergone or will undergo medical treatment or continue to recover. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you, what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And dear friends, I invite you to pray with me Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Raised from the dead, he will never die again. Death has no more dominion over him. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Dying, Christ dies to sin once for all. Living, he lives to God. Count yourselves as dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. And dear friends in Christ, we pray that God would continue to keep each and every one of you safe and healthy, and we hope to see you back in God's house very shortly. Uh, just a few announcements. Uh, just wanting to let you know, the registration for uh, the golf outing for Lutheran Island Camp is coming up August 14th, uh, so please register by then. You can Register by calling 218-583-2905. Um, once again, the cost is $70 per golfer. It's 18 holes. That includes your golf, your golf cart, a drawing ticket, and lunch. Um, if you'd like to sponsor a hole, it's $60 a minimum. If you would like to sponsor, please contact Pastor Jeff Ross. And if you need his contact information, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, you can find that information uh, through Island Camp's newsletter. Uh, if you don't have a four-person team, you can still register and participate. Uh, individuals will be assigned to a team. So please take advantage of that. All the proceeds go towards helping camp through this time, and it's a wonderful, wonderful ministry to support. Also coming up uh, soon is Phil Skolte's 90th birthday party. That'll be at the VFW August 15th from 4 to 6. Uh, they do ask no gifts, please, but you are more than welcome to bring cards and just come and, and celebrate uh, 90 years of life with Phil. That's it in the way of announcements. Once again, dear friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you and keep you safe. And we hope to see you back in God's house uh, whenever you feel comfortable to do so. Go on God's peace. Amen.